with all this talk about cancer over the last couple of days, um, I started to think about my own thing with cancer and how I went through it. About 10 years ago, I found out I had testicular cancer. And how I found out, it was kind of surprising. I um, got tested prior to this because my father had cancer. But it starts off as a small, uh, like a mole or either a pimple. And it got larger within like a week's time. I was like, oh my God, this is not a, a pimple. There's something wrong here. So I started doing some research online. And when I checked, it said, immediately go to your doctor and get checked out. So I went to the doctor and um, he took a blood test. And the first thing he said is, we're gonna schedule surgery within a week time from today. And I was like, surgery for what? And then he explained to me that your testicle, when you get growths like this, that large, that quick, uh, there's a strong chance that you have cancer cells in your body. The blood test came back showing that I did have a high PSA, which is what you use to gauge the amount of cancer that is in your body at the time. So we took the test, it came back positive, and then after that, the following week, I had to go and have surgery. And he explained everything to me as far as what I would go through. Um, there would be either chemo or radiation after this and I was scared because I didn't know what to do what to say how to feel it's so, okay I went through the uh, surgery and then he said for the next couple of months we're gonna have to do chemotherapy and uh, probably even uh, radiation <sighs> trying time for sure so okay um, they did the surgery and I had to stay home for about I guess I couldn't really be mobile, really, for about two to three weeks. And it was kind of hard to get back into walking because you want to stand upright, but the suture area where they make the incision to remove the testicle, um, it makes it hard to stand up. So you have to be careful because you don't want to tear the area that you had the surgery on. And um, I spoke to a couple of the physical therapy people at the hospital. It was Memorial Hospital here in Florida. And they told me that you should practice trying to stand up straight. After three to four weeks, if you continue to walk bent over, it won't be uh, positive for your uh, posture. You know, stand straight up, you know. It'll hurt, but you gotta get your body back in order. So I did that. And then once that was over, I had to end up going back to the hospital. And on a co-op week, uh, one week where I'm getting uh, chemotherapy for seven days, and then the other seven days I'm off. Uh, I did this for almost two months. All my hair fell out, eyebrows came off. Oh God, it was, it was a trial situation. Um, my father came to stay with me to kind of help out for a little while and um, I was glad he was here. <laughs> he offered to give me a haircut and I said, okay, fine, yeah, give me a haircut because I hadn't been to the barber in months. I went in the shower to take a shower and I'm shampooing my hair and as I'm shampooing my hair, all my hair starts to fall out. Now I kind of knew it was going to happen, but I didn't think it would be that drastic. But as time went on, I'm rubbing my hand through my hair and my hair is coming out in clumps and I'm beginning to freak out. I'm like, is this the way it's supposed to happen? You know, I, I didn't really think it was gonna happen like that. So I come out the shower and my father says to me, did you cut your hair? And I said, no. I said, dad, it was the chemo. The doctor told me, you know, sooner or later, your hair is gonna fall out. Anyway, that was one of the side effects of doing chemo. Now, the doctor automatically told me, too, that I would get uh, queasiness, uh, uh, stomach would be upset, I'd lose my uh, appetite, and I was saying to myself, oh, okay, so I'm gonna lose weight over the next couple of months, you know, or whatever, while I'm going through this chemo. Turns out I had the opposite effect. I was hungry all the time. 
tell you a situation. I'm in the hospital. This is one of the co-op weeks that I'm getting chemotherapy. And um, I'm hungry. I mean, I ate lunch. I ate breakfast. I was snacking throughout the day. I ordered a Domino's pizza, meat lovers, with extra everything on it, and a 64-ounce Pepsi. The uh, nurse calls me and says, hey, your pizza is in the emergency room. Would you like me to go get it? I said, yeah, I gave her the money, she went and got it. And when she brought it up, she said, this pizza is awfully heavy. You think you'll be able to eat the whole pizza? You know, you want me to put some of it away? I said, no, just bring it in the room. I ate the whole pizza and drank the whole 64 ounce Pepsi in one shot. And she couldn't believe that I ate that much. But that was just some of the side effects that happened. It, it, it was the opposite side effect of what we experienced or what the doctor experienced with previous patients and said that this time it, it just worked opposite. Anyway, over the next couple of weeks uh, from being in the hospital to get the chemotherapy and then being at home, it totally whacked out my senses. Um, I can smell anything. You name it, I can smell it. I even had to ask my wife, please don't wear perfume when you come here. Because when you come in the room, it, it just, it just kills me because my sense of smell was so acute that I could smell everything. Even the uh, nurses, after a while, they were using this light scented soap. They said, we'll use an unscented soap since it makes you upset. I mean, that was making me nauseous. And the side effects are just extreme. Anyway, after all that had happened, um, I ended my uh, co-op week of cancer. Um, I still was out of work for another month or so before I went back because I was still um, being checked by the doctor on a weekly basis. And um, I went back to work and I couldn't even button my pants that I normally used to wear beforehand. I could just put my pants on and go on about my way. But now my belt wasn't even going around my waist because I had put on so much weight and people could see it. They said, oh my God, can you, your face is fat. And I said, well, the chemo made me really hungry. So I, I ate a lot and I put on a lot of weight. Anyway, as time went on, the weight dropped off and I kind of got back to normal. Wow, it was just a trying situation, a trying time just to experience that. And um, I had to go back to the doctor then every six months to get a checkup for the first year. They want you to come back every six months and they do that PSA test to test the, the level of cancer in your system. And um, the PSA dropped over the first six months and then over a year. And then once you pass a year, they want you to come back yearly instead of every six months and do the test again and again. And they take a blood test, take a urine test. But I can tell you that it is one of the most uncomfortable things to do. Um, the removal of your testicle is something that is kind of jarring to a man, you know, to have this done to you. And um, I don't wish it on anybody else. Um, but there are ways that you can kind of um, cope with it. There are some books that are available that I kind of glanced through, you know, to change my diet, uh, a little bit more exercise than normal. I mean, my job is a physical job, but to do some exercises to kind of keep the weight off because they did assign me certain exercises that I needed to do. And I just had to uh, take care of myself better than I was doing before but it was a trial I wouldn't ask anybody else to do or hope nobody else would have that problem that I did. But most men, I think in your early, early 30s, probably the 40 is when you should start getting tested for uh, testicular cancer, even if you don't have it, at least have the test to see if you don't have any traits of it so that way they can catch it early. And it helps to do that. Um, but I don't wish it on anybody. 